Unlike wheel or needle, space rockets seem to be the product of modern minds. However, that's not entirely the case. Even though we just started exploring the outer space, humankind made things that function like a rocket for centuries. Thanks to those simple devices our ancestors made, we are now making much more complex spacecrafts, and we made a huge progress in rocket science. And it all started 2,400 years ago. First mention of anything rocket-like is in writings of Aulus Gellius from Rome. He writes about a Greek guy named Architas. Architas developed a system where a wooden pigeon is suspended by wires and propelled by steam. Although it was used as part of a show to amaze the locals, the device was propelled using Newton's third law for propulsion. Considering that period's standards, it could be called a rocket simply because it had a basic propulsion system. Interestingly, Archytas made it without knowing Newton's laws of motion, which would be developed 20 centuries later. Sometime in the first century BC, another Greek inventor, this time named Hero of Alexandria, made a very interesting engine. He came up with a steam-driven device called Aeolipil, which can be commonly known as Hero's engine. Just like Architas' pigeon, Aeolipile also worked using Newton's third law of action and reaction. The engine had a small storage for water and on top of it two tubes attached to a sphere. When you started a fire under the device, it would heat up the water in it and that water would be converted to steam and rise through tubes into the sphere. The sphere was designed in a way that it could spin a horizontal axis all together with the additional two L-shaped tubes. So as the steam tries to escape from the sphere, it goes out through those tube nozzles. And this force of steam would give a thrust to the sphere and make it rotate. This simple looking system actually has most parts of a basic thermal rocket engine. Also during that period, the Chinese might have also been making rockets accidentally. They had a simple form of gunpowder made from saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal dust. These basic forms of fireworks were used to create explosions during festivals. They would fill bamboo tubes with the gunpowder mixture and then toss them into fire. Some assume that maybe some of those tubes failed to explode and just skittered out of the fires and managed to jump upwards propelled by the gases and the burning gunpowder. But the Chinese didn't stop there. Soon they began to experiment with gunpowder. At first, they took those fireworks they made using bamboo tubes and attach them to arrows. And after lighting one end of the tube, they would launch it with a bow. But then they realized that they don't even need bows because these gunpowder tubes could launch themselves when you attach them to an arrow and put on the ground. And we can say that's here is the birth of true rockets. During the Battle of Kaikang in 1232, it was reported that the Chinese used tube rockets against the Mongols. They would fill a tube with gunpowder and leave one end of it open. The open end would be lit, and the ignition of gunpowder would create heat, smoke, and exhaust gases. And as a result, all those components would be forced out of open end of the tube and cause a thrust. These tube rockets attached to a huge arrows were simple forms of modern solid propellant rockets. Although we are not sure if these early rockets caused any destruction, they surely had psychological effects on the Mongols. Because after the Kekong battle, the Mongols tried to develop their own rockets. Actually, it's assumed that the spread of rocket science in Europe during that period happened because of the Mongols. Throughout this period, there emerged many curious people making experiments with rockets. Rockets were continued to be used in battles all over the world, including China and France. It was even used by Joan of Arc during the Orleans battle in 1449. In 13th century, an English monk named Roger Bacon worked on gunpowder and played a huge role in improving the formula. And this helped a lot to develop the range of rockets they had during the time. Also, this period saw Frenchman Jean Foissart improving the accuracy of rocket launches. Jones de Fontana from Italy also worked on rocketry. He designed a very interesting torpedo which would be propelled with a surface running rocket. It was said to be used to set enemy ships on fire. There's also a very interesting story during this period about presumably the first attempted astronaut of the world. Jokes aside, there was a Chinese official named Wan Hu and he wanted to use rockets as a means of transportation. So he built a rocket powered flying chair with the help of several assistants. He attached two large kites to the chair and 47 fire arrow rockets to the kites. On the launch day, 
He sat on the chair and 47 rocket assistants lit the fuses. As he prepared himself for the liftoff, tremendously loud noise was heard. After huge clouds of smoke cleared, there was no trace of Wan Hu or his rocket chair. Even though no one knows what exactly happened, probably he just blew himself up to millions of pieces. China's neighbor country, Korean Kingdom of Joseon, were also producing gunpowder cannons and rockets by the year 1377. In 15th century, they developed a device for launching multiple rockets. The device was known as Munjong Huacha, and they would fire one or two hundred rocket-powered arrows at the same time. Another noteworthy fact of the period is about a German fireworks maker, Johann Schmidlop. He wrote in his book about the possibility of mounting rockets on top of each other, in other words, staging them. His ideas could be the birth of today's staged rockets. By 17th century, there were already great developments in understanding of rockets and how they might work. For example, there was a staged rocket design made by the Polish artillery expert Kasimierz Siemienowicz in 1650. Another suggestion came from England in 1696. Robert Anderson published a document where he described how to make a solid rocket. But one of the most important events in history of rocket science was when Sir Isaac Newton laid the scientific foundations for modern rocketry with his three laws of motion. Newton's laws helped other scientists and engineers to understand how rockets worked. In early 18th century, German and Russian scientists were already experimenting with heavy rockets. These rockets were known to weigh as much as 45 kilograms, and they were so powerful that they'd burn deep holes on the ground where they were launched. By the end of 18th century, Indians were using basic rockets in battles against the British. A British Admiral, Sir William Congreve, saw Indians using rockets and got very impressed by it. So much that when he came back to England, he carried multiple rocket experiments to eventually use rockets in the British military. Later, the rockets he developed were used against Napoleon, the United States, and even inspired the line, Rockets Red Glare, which later became the American National Anthem. Congreve's rockets were still used in battles until 1844. In that year, the English inventor William Hale developed the forefather of rotary rockets, which later contributed to the making of spin stabilization in modern rockets. Hale's stickless rockets managed to replace Congreve's more basic rockets. At the beginning of the 20th century, the world first heard the ideas of two true fathers of modern rocket science and engineering. One of these great minds was Russian, and the other one was American. The Russian was a high school math teacher named Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, and in 1903, he proposed an idea to use rockets to explore the outer space. He published hundreds of papers suggesting ideas about multi-stage rockets. For the details and theories he put forward, Tsiolkovsky is often referred to as the father of modern astronautics. Tsiolkovsky applied an existing equation to calculate whether rockets could achieve enough speeds to reach the space. The equation was later named after him as the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation since he was first to use it in rocket science. His works inspired generations of scientists and engineers for further research of the topic. As a Soviet rocket scientist, his ideas were not very popular outside the Union, but inside the country, his researches led to the formation of the Society for Studies of Interplanetary Travel in 1924. Can you guess who was the inspiration of his early ideas? Science fiction writer Jules Verne, the American genius, was none other than Robert Goddard. He suggested that liquid rocket fuel would be better choice for carrying more payload to higher altitudes. He was convinced that rockets could be made in stages and fuel should be burned in small combustion chamber rather than in propellant containers. Alongside with these novel ideas, he also patented his concept of using de Laval nozzle to increase the rocket's speed. Robert Goddard can be rightfully called the father of modern rocketry because in addition to his genius ideas, he also made the first liquid-fueled rocket in history. His rocket lifted off in 1926 and peaked at around 12.5 meters, and after only 2.5 seconds, it landed 56 meters away from the launch site in a cabbage patch. That first launch could be seen very insignificant by today's standards, but it caused the birth of a whole new era in rocket science. If you're interested in his source of inspiration, it was another sci-fi writer, H.G. Wells. Goddard didn't stop experimenting with rockets. 
His spacecrafts kept getting bigger and better, and they flew much higher. He even developed a gyroscope system for controlling the flight, added a payload compartment to the rockets for scientific instruments. He also used parachutes for returning rockets and instruments. Only two years after the first historical launch, he made a rocket that had a camera, a barometer, and a thermometer. And he managed to recover all these things after the spaceflight. Another notable scientist during this period was Hungarian-German physicist Hermann Oberth. He published The Rocket into Planetary Space, where he discussed possibilities of manned flight and how it would affect the human body. Oberth was the one who suggested the idea of putting satellites into space with the help of rockets. He inspired the formation of many space clubs and organizations. In 1930s, Goddard already made a huge progress in rocket making. He even launched a rocket that reached the speed of 800 kilometers per hour, and the vehicle went as high as 600 meters in altitude. The rocket development continued at a high speed during this period. Countries like Germany, the Soviet Union, and of course the US conducted multiple rocket tests. While some of these rockets went as high as 3.5 kilometers, Goddard's rockets that continued to break records achieved another milestone by breaking the speed of sound. In the late 1930s, German rocket scientists were more concentrated on making military weapons for Hitler. Aerospace engineer Werner von Braun, who later played a pivotal role in American rocket industry, was then a member of Nazi party and helped them design the famous V-2 rocket, which was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. It was so powerful that it would destroy whole city blocks. Fortunately, though, it came too late in the war to affect its outcome. After the war, some German scientists were captured by the Soviets and the States. Von Braun was with those who were taken to the United States. Throughout the 1940, both the Soviet Union and the US continued to make more advanced rockets and eventually reached the space. Unfortunately, the rocket genius Robert Goddard passed away from cancer in 1945 and couldn't participate in these experiments. But scientists like von Braun continued to learn from his theories and methods. They used Germans' V-2 rockets as research vehicles to develop new technology. Intercontinental ballistic missiles the Soviets and the US developed later would be used to carry astronauts into outer space. One thing that was still a problem was uncertainty about rockets surviving the atmospheric reentry. In 1951, it was discovered that a blunt-shaped high drag can protect the vehicle from the extreme heat of the atmosphere. The day that changed the course of rocketry and space exploration forever was October 4, 1957, when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1. It wasn't only the humanity's first vehicle launched into space, but also the first orbital vehicle. The small satellite and the whole launch program was directed by the legendary figure Sergei Korolev, who was inspired by Tsiolkovsky's works. The launch of Sputnik 1 concerned Americans a great deal. They were worried that the Soviets could launch nuclear weapons right from the space. The same year, the Soviets launched Sputnik 2 with the dog Laika on board. Laika, being the first animal in space, was put to sleep because of the oxygen supply shortage. While the Soviet Union took the first place in the space race for a while, the US engineers worked even harder. After an unsuccessful launch attempt of the Vanguard rocket, finally in 1958, the US Army launched the American Satellite Explorer 1. Von Braun, who would attempt to make a rocket in the garden as a teenager, was an essential part of this mission. The same year the States launched its first Vanguard rocket, which is still orbiting the Earth, even though it has lost power. In 1961, the manned era of space exploration began with Yuri Gagarin. Gagarin became the first man in space after he was launched atop the Vostok 1 rocket. The culmination of space exploration was the moon landings the U.S. carried out, and especially the moment Neil Armstrong put his foot on the moon in 1969 as the first man who walked on a celestial body other than Earth. But it didn't stop there. Ever since, several countries have continued the exploration in space by sending humans to orbit, launching spacecrafts to study the planets, and constructing space stations in Earth's orbit to do further researches. Probably during these a few decades, rockets saw a much bigger development compared to thousands of years until the modern era of rocketry. The history of rockets is the history of humankind, 
the history of willpower and hard work. We the humans turned simple gunpowder devices into complex two million pieces technology miracles and used them to explore the unknown beyond Earth.